Welcome to Slippery Licks with Sean Daniel, where the only thing slipperier than licks is the elusive nature of happiness. So to me, what makes a slippery lick is something with a lot of sliding. So what we're gonna work on today is gonna be this right here. Okay, now this is really just kind of like a minor arpeggio, run, lick, riff, whatever you wanna call it. And this is gonna be something you can do in any key, move it around. So let's start out with just doing, this is gonna be in the key of G, by the way, but we're gonna start on an A note, okay? So we're gonna slide into it. Slip and slide, slippery style, right here. Is slipperier a word? I don't even know, whatever. But we're sliding from like three to five. There's our root note, okay? Now, this is gonna be a minor thing. In the key of G, the second note is A which is a minor chord. The third note is B, which is another minor chord. There are actually three minor chords, which we're gonna talk about. But we're gonna start on this A note, and then we're gonna go take this from the five E to three A. All right, so it's already nice and slippery, so hold on tight because we're grabbing the minor third right here. If you're gonna play the minor scale, right there, an A to a C, A, C, right there. But we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna stay on the A string. This is gonna be kind of like our shape right here. We're gonna slide from here to the minor third. We're gonna grab the fifth fret on the A string, slide to the seventh fret on the A string, and then end up on the fifth fret on the D string, okay? Super slippery. Now, what uh, we're gonna start doing is we're gonna move around within this shape. Now, if we talked about the intervals that this is, we have a root note, it's minor third, it's perfect fourth and fifth, right? If we were to play the like the A minor scale, one, two, three, four, five, we're grabbing a one, three, four, five, and then a seven. So uh, in major scale terms, that'd be a one flat three, four, five, flat seven. Okay, so it's just kind of really the same move twice. You slide into a note, you go down a string, back to your frets. Slide into another note, down a string, back to your frets. We're creating repeatable patterns that we're gonna use all throughout the fretboard. Now, once we get here, we can go back to this note right here, which is the seventh fret on the A string, which is an E. Now, the other minor chord in the key of G is an E minor. The two, three, and six chords, or the two, three, and six notes become minor chords. So in G, G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E, the sixth note is E, relative minor. That means this E right here is eligible for the exact same thing that we did. So we can run back to the E, and then do the exact same thing. Any minor chord can be used with this little run lick. All right, now what this is gonna bring us to is gonna be right here. The ninth fret on the D string is a B, which happens to be the third note in the key of G, which is yet another minor chord. So once we're here, we can do the same exact shape with one variation. The only thing we have to change, so there's 90, 7G to 9G to 11G. Now instead of going this to 9B, we go to 10B because we have to compensate for the B string being one semitone off. So we're gonna start by sliding into the A, grabbing his kind of minor run there, go back one note to the E, now we can do the E minor one, go back another note to a B, and then a G if you want, I mean however you want to do it, but you can do this anywhere in the key of G uh, using these minor chords linking together. Now if we just did it in order like that, it sounds cool, but what you might want to do is kind of go forward and backwards to kind of make it more of like a lead playing thing. I'm kind of like speeding up through parts of it. I'm gonna just go from that minor third back. And all I'm doing is I'm running through those shapes and uh, in really any kind of way that you want. So you can kind of start incorporating those into maybe like a chord lead type thing. Like let's just take two chords from the key of G, like an A minor and a G major. A. Kind 
kind of going into those slippery licks between the chords and it sounds really cool because you're just doing a one kind of minor run and repeating it on all the minor chord spots yeah, throughout the neck. So it's a really good way to kind of see the relationship between the two, three, and six notes or chords within a key or a scale. You can do that in any key. Eventually these intervals, the spaces between them just become second nature. So you don't really even have to think like, okay, this is an A, which means this is an E, which means this is a B. Eventually you just kind of like learn to kind of move through the fretboard. And then if I did that in the key of G or the key of E minor, however you want to look at it, you could do it anywhere. You could start with like a C. Really? The, the movement of it through the fretboard is what becomes second nature. And it's kind of, I, I think, in my opinion, one of the most important things you can work on. And what better way to work on it than with some very slippery licks? So if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I'll talk to you soon.